In this video, I want to show you a variety of different Photoshop techniques that are used to simply mock up the artwork onto different areas. So in all, on all of my examples, I want to use this artwork and I want to put it into some particular area. Each one of these kind of has some unique challenges to it. They have to be in perspective or put on different surface colors, or maybe we even have to change the color of the artwork altogether. Once you understand the basic techniques, then you can start to see where it can be applied to your mock-ups whenever you use them. I want to start off with the simple banner. So for this, the first thing I want to do is to pay attention to my layers. Right now I've got everything in just one background layer. My artwork needs to have its own individual separate layer. I'm going to use my rectangular marquee to select the artwork area. I'm simply going to go to edit and cut and then edit and paste and that'll put my artwork on its own individual layer one. Next I need the artwork to fill the area that I want to mock up. Now I need to also see that area so what I like to do is to drop the opacity down just a bit so I can see both the artwork and the underlying area. In my case, this artwork is disproportionate. It's either going to be too tall or too narrow, but as long as it fills out the entire area for the purposes of a mock-up, this will actually work out really, really good. So I'm going to keep it right as close as I can to fill out the entire area. Now if I zoom in, you can see the discrepancy. You can see where there's a little bit more of the poster that doesn't fit on the little uh, the, the poster stand. That's okay. What we want to do is we want to create a mask to erase away these edges and make it look like it's actually on the area. So to do this, we're going to go to our layers panel and let's create a layer mask on our art layer. Inside of this mask, wherever we paint black will allow us to clean up the edges. So to do that, I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool. I'm going to set my foreground color to be black. And I'm also going to choose a brush that's just kind of a hard edge round brush. In our case, the size of it, we can make it a little bit smaller. Depends on what you need to area you need to do. But make sure the hardness is set to 100%. Also, while we're here, make sure you're working in normal mode and your opacity is set to 100% as well. Now I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to clean up the edges by painting along this particular area. Oops, let's make sure my flow is also at 100%. Carefully click and drag along the edge and paint it until everything is nice and cleaned up. A good tip to know is that you can click once to start an area. So like I'll click right here, move over and hold down the shift key. And when you click again, it'll paint from that point over. So if you're needing to paint straight lines, all you have to do is hold down shift and move down just a bit and Photoshop will do the rest in between. Now this works really really good for straight runs so in this case if I need to go from the top to the bottom all I've got to do is choose the different corners or parts of it I can go all the way from one edge to another. Let's do it going down as well all the way from here whoops, down to here. Now when we back out you can see it works good the last thing I need to do is pay attention to any other areas. For instance, like her hand. This hand, in order to make it look convincing, also needs to be masked out. So very carefully, I'm going to paint over hers and get that done too. Once you finish placing and masking it off, you can bring the opacity back up to 100% and back out. And now you can see your photo is mocked up or your artwork is mocked up inside of the photograph. I can then flatten this and save it up as a Photoshop file or as another JPEG to turn in. To flatten it, you can go to Layer, down to Flatten Image, and this will merge all of your layers down to one single layer. I can now go up to File and Save, and save it however I need. Looking at some of the other ones, let's open the billboard. Now this billboard has a unique little problem to it. We want to be able to put this into this area, but also have it be in perspective. And of course, we need to round off the edges. However, the advantage to using this kind of mock-up is that it has a solid white background. This makes it much easier to place things and select an area. So we're going to start off like we did before. I'm going to use my rectangular marquee, and I'm going to select my artwork. In this case, at the very bottom, we'll go to Edit 
and we'll cut it and then we'll go to edit one more time and paste it so that the artworks in its own individual layer now we'll pull up generally place it in there and let's drop the opacity just a bit more so we can see both of it as well to make this look like it's going in perspective with the layer selected you can go up to edit down to transform and there's a variety of different ways you can transform it there is a perspective transformation but to be honest I don't find it easy to use instead I like using the distort transformation with distort this allows you to click on the bounding edges of your area and move it in exactly where you want it to be so in our case we're going to try to line it up as best as you can with the top and bottom corners of each edge move over here place it on this side then down on this side as long as everything is still proportional it'll line up nicely and it'll actually look really good and like it's in perspective itself do keep in mind that it's still going to have those rounded edges that we need to mask off we hit return and there it is there from here I'm going to bring my opacity back up to 100% and I'm going to turn off visibility of my artwork for now I want to be able to select my background layer the the uh, area we want to select and let's quickly select all of the white inside of this area to do that you can use your magic wand selection tool we're going to keep it on normal mode and you can set your tolerance to be really whatever since it's just white I usually like to keep it at a default of around 30 we do want to make sure contiguous is turned on so that it selects all of the white areas just inside of this one area now when I click inside the white you can see very quickly it selects just that area including the rounded portion now I can go to my layers let's go back to our artwork layer and select it once you have an area selected you can turn on your layer mask and it'll automatically mask out that layer notice now that the rounded corners look really nice and it looks like it's mocked up well inside of that from here I can go up to file or layer excuse me I can flatten the image and I can save this up as a JPEG again we'll close it out let's look at the next one for the delivery van when we open this in Photoshop again it needs to be in perspective and so we need to select our artwork and we're going to cut it away and paste it in its own layer and again you can also drop the opacity of it just so we can see what we're working on go up to image or excuse me edit and transform and we'll use the distort transformation now the unique thing about this particular artwork is that you want to be able to still keep it relatively proportional so don't make it too skewed or too off and use the perspective lines that's on this particular van they give you an idea of the direction everything should be going in as you place it once it's done we can hit return and let's bring back up the opacity now even though it's white artwork on a white van we're still not picking up on the shadow and highlight details of the texture the quickest way to blend this together would be go to, to go to your layers menu and change your blending mode to something like multiply with multiply selected it's going to get rid of all the lighter valued colors and it's going to start to blend in the highlights and shadows with it so now it looks like it's actually blended in with the, the uh, truck itself so changing your blending modes is another great way of adding a uh, depth of realism it doesn't work for all artwork but in this case if you've got a white background it makes a quick easy way of turning those white pixels transparent again we'll flatten this or save it up as a Photoshop file or a JPEG next we have the box as with the other one this is a great example of how to put things into perspective and also change your blending mode in this case we've got two different artworks so I need to be able to first select those and cut and paste them on their own individual layers let's take it one at a time here's also a great way to uh, a great keyboard shortcut so with my layers selected I'm going to go ahead and put it into multiply and instead of going to edit and down to transform and distort every time with my selection tool 
I've turned on my transform controls. And this way I can automatically select an entire layer. If I hold down the command key when I click on the edge, that'll automatically take me into distortion mode. And so rather than going up there, just hold down command and click on the edges of your transform box. And this will allow you to put it into perspective. Again, try to align it as best as you can to make it look nice and correct. We'll do the same for the back of the box. Make sure to select the correct layer, excuse me. Select it, cut it and paste it. Command X, Command V. Grab my move tool. Again, I want to be able to see it, so I'm just going to change this to multiply. Now I'll get rid of the lighter color pixels. Then hold down the Command key on your keyboard. And place it where it needs to be. You can then save this up, and this will be the next one that we do. This keychain has a unique problem in, uh, in itself. So let's go ahead and cut out the area. In my case, since it's an elliptical or a circular area, I'm going to use my elliptical marquee to select the white of this area. We'll cut it and paste it. And I can go ahead and kind of scale it down to see where it can fit. Now, even though it's white, I want to be able to get rid of the white outline that's around the, uh, the logo. If I was to change it to multiply, however, it's going to be way too dark. It's actually going to get rid of the white that I want to keep that's inside of the logo. And there is no good blending mode that will allow you to see these transformations. Instead, we just need to be able to mask out all the area that's around the, uh, the logo itself. In order to do this, I'm going to quickly mask it out by selecting my artwork layer. and Let's turn on that layer mask. Now with the layer mask added and the layer mask selected, you can go to your properties panel and choose select and mask. Inside of this special masking area, I like to go over to the properties panel and view it on the layer so I can see exactly what I'm painting out and what I'm keeping. Also, since we're working with a simple little logo to quickly and easily find the area, tell it to select the subject. Now this may give you a warning. Do you want to dis uh, card in, discard any current selections? We'll say OK. And Photoshop usually does a pretty good job of selecting and highlighting just the area that we want to keep and the area we want to mask out. Now it doesn't do everything perfectly. Obviously it's missing these inner portions. So to clean it up, we're going to use this middle selection brush tool, the refine edge tool. And we're going to set the size of it to be you know, small enough to be able to see. So if I was to zoom in, I can click and drag inside of this area and be able to clean up the white spots or any parts that it may have missed. If I need to, I can adjust the size and radius of this so that it's smaller and fits the area. And all I've got to do now is simply go in until it gets all the parts that I need to erase away. With this done, scroll to the bottom of your properties panel and make sure the output settings have it outputting to a layer mask. With that done, we can say OK. We can back out and you can see this gives us our object nice and masked into the area. Now if for some reason it's still messing up a little bit or you get a few little pixels, this is where you can go in with your regular paintbrush tool. And again, if you paint black inside of this area, do make sure the layer mask is selected. It'll mask it off and it'll actually clean it up a little bit better. In my case, I'm zoomed way in, so I'm seeing the individual pixels. The whole purpose of these mock-ups is just to give you an idea of what it should look like. So it doesn't have to be 100% pixel perfect. Once I zoom out, it'll be uh, well done in here. Also, while I'm here, if you do make a mistake and you accidentally paint too much, you can always swap over to white as being your foreground color and paint the pixels back in and bring back that particular area. Again, swap back over to black to remove any parts that you may have missed. So this does take a little bit of time depending on the artwork that you're working on, but usually this masking technique goes really quickly. 
The final thing you may want to do is to change the color of whatever artwork you have. Now this can be simply done if you've got the vector file that you're placing into a JPEG. But if you don't have a vector file, if all you have is just a JPEG to work with, there is a couple of what things that we can do in Photoshop to make it simple for you. So first off, I'm going to zoom in. And let's put Mississippi College on its own layer. So I'm going to select my artwork, move my layers panel out of the way. Again, we're going to cut it and paste it so that it's inside of this layer. To make it easier to keep track of what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to whatever color logo it needs to be. So in my case, since this is going to be a red logo, I'm going to call this red logo for this layer. Next, I'll make a copy of it as well, holding down my Option key. Oops. And this will be my yellow logo. And I'm going to copy this one. This will be my white logo. Let's have a look at the red logo first. With that layer selected, I can place it on top of here. And let's go ahead and drop the opacity of it. This way I can scale it down to know that it fits nicely on top of my pencil. The next thing I need to do is to remove the white that's around it. I could use a multiply blend to get rid of the white, but when I change the color of it, it's going to be difficult to, to change the color or get the red looking correctly if I try to multiply that. So in this case, I want to use a special blending mode inside the effects panel. With the layer selected, choose the FX panel at the very bottom and open up your blending options. With these blending options, in the very top selection, notice the blend if area at the very bottom. This will allow you to remove areas of light or darker pixels. Under this layer, if I click on the lighter pixels and drag it to the left, you can see how the white pixels will start to disappear. Now if I keep going, it's going to eventually get all the values that are on here. So what I want to do is I want to move it in just enough to get rid of all the white pixels and we can stop from there. If I needed to refine the edges even farther, you can hold down the Option key and click on the white and then drag that to the left. And this will also clean up any of the little edge pixels that are almost white, but not 100%. Uh, not so Option and drag to bring that on. So that's another great way of getting rid of the white or turning the white transparent. Now let's change the color of your logo. With the red logo selected, I can choose an adjustment layer to add on top of it. By clicking here, we can scroll down and let's choose the gradient map adjustment. This is going to add a gradient map layer. And in my case, it's going from white to white, but yours may be different if yours pops up. Inside of the properties panel, let's select this. And at the very bottom, this gradient, or this uh, swatch for our gradient, needs to represent the darker pixels. So in our case, this is going to change up the blue by clicking on it, or double clicking, and let's choose red. Now you can see everything that was dark is now turned red, and this represents obviously the lighter pixels. And if you double click on it, you can change it to be white, and we'll keep it white in my case. Now you can slide this around and adjust the dark and light point from here, but this is actually giving me good results for what I've got. We'll say OK to that. So at any time, if you need to adjust this gradient, you can simply click on it and set this one to be your dark pixels or whatever color you want to change to. And this one usually needs to be set to be white. To get it to fit or to show up just on the layer that's below it, with my gradient map layer selected, I can go and create a clipping mask. We'll go up to Layer down to Clipping Mask. And now you can see because the arrow is pointing to here, this is only going to be applied to that particular layer. Let's do the same for the yellow logo. I'll turn on visibility for it and select that layer. Again, we need to scale it down so we can place it right where it needs to be. I'm just going to eyeball it right there. In order to get rid of the white behind it, we're going to go to our Effects panel and open your Blending Options. 
inside the effect the yeah blending options of your effects panel let's bring in the white portion of this layer a blending layer and you can see the little pixels around the edges so this is where I'm going to hold down my option key and split it apart and move this until I get some better results for my design now it's looking much better again we'll say okay and to change the color of this we're going to go back to the layers panel Oops, excuse me in this cam we're going to turn on an adjustment layer at the very bottom of a gradient map with that layer selected, we're going to click on our gradient in the properties panel. Set your first swatch by double clicking on it. And in my case, I'm going to make it yellow. And our second swatch, we're going to keep it as white. And we'll say OK. In order to make it show up just on the layer below, we're going to go to image, excuse me, go to layer and choose create a clipping mask. Now in this case, it looks like it's disappeared, but here's what's happening. On my original logo layer, these yellow pixels are still really light now, and so they're going away. So we need to double click again on our blending mode, make sure blending options is selected, and let's adjust this white point for our blending. Let's bring it all the way back down to white. You can see there it is nice and appearing. Again, hold down option, and you can adjust the edges until it shows up nicely and looks correct for your mock-up. This done, now we can say OK. So sometimes there's a give and, give and take and back point to, uh, to making it look good. The final one is going to be the white logo. Go ahead and scale it down and place it where it needs to be. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change the color so that you get an idea of this effect. Because in, instead of getting the, rid of the white, we want the white to be the color of the logo. So I'm going to start by adding on my gradient map first. With that added, we'll open up the options for the gradient map in the properties panel. And I'm going to set my darkest point, in this case the, for the logo, we're going to keep it as being white. And the lighter points, or the background, we're going to set this as being black. And we'll say OK. So now you get this negative effect. My logo is now white the way I want it to be, but I want the background to be nice and black. And again, you can adjust the midpoint or the points of this to make your logo more or less white, depending on the needs of your design. Now I can go to Layer. And let's create a clipping mask for that layer so it's only being applied to the logo. Now to get rid of the black outline around it, we can select our logo layer. And under the effects menu, open the blending options. And in this case, instead of getting rid of the white point, we want to bring in the darker point. So clicking on this dark point and dragging it to the right, and even holding down option, and splitting that apart will allow you to get rid of the darker area for those. We'll say OK to this. Oops, let's back out so we can see it. So all three of these have some unique challenges to what you want to do to make them look correctly. But in this case, if you want to change the color of it, using a gradient map tends to be the best way of doing it. And to get rid of the outlines in the background, you can also use the Blend If option under your blending options for your layers. Saving this up, this is what we'll turn in for this particular exercise.